I'd like to welcome everybody. We're going to get fired up right now with news you can use. What can I say? There is so much news that we can use here. I uh, We may have to take the whole hour <laughs> to do this thing, actually. It's crazy. Um, it, Got it. It, let's hear it. <laughs> it. It's Well, let's just start off with the bad news, and then we'll get to the worst news. How's that sound? Sounds uh, good. Bad news, everybody saw yesterday, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates three quarters of a percent, 75 basis points, uh, it's called. Um, the news prior to that, a couple of days prior to that, said, you know, there was a possibility you could go up. Instead, normally, they go up a quarter point, 25 basis points, maybe 50, like they did last time. They went 75. Well, why did they do this? Because the indications are that they're previous rate increases have not been enough that inflation keeps going up. In fact, it ended last month at an 8.9% annual rate. That's extremely high. The, the goal of the Fed is to keep that interest rate under 2% per year. That's kind of the metric that everybody is, is looking for. Um, so they, they hit us with kind of a surprise 0.75% or uh, 75 basis points number. That So it brought the number from 1% the, the basic, what used to be called the prime rate, from 1% to 1.75%. That's a huge increase. Um, everybody's running around like chickens with their heads cut off. But I thought I'd go back and kind of do some analysis. And some of this stuff I found from another guy on Facebook. Uh, I have not verified all this, but I think it's real interesting. Uh, and I think I've looked at a couple of things, and I, some of them I actually lived through, so I know these are right. Um, as of yesterday, the S&P was down 15% year to date. NASDAQ was down 23%. Facebook is down 43%. Netflix, 67%. Amazon, 43%. And Bitcoin, which is the leading cryptocurrency out there right now, is 40% off year to date. That's a huge drop. You're going to see in the news probably within the next month, most likely, I think, within the next three weeks or so, um, some official notification that we are actually in a recession. I believe we're there now. I think people have been uh, skittish to say it. And in fact, all the news cycles came out uh, this morning and they talked about that kind of thing and how it's going to affect the various businesses. I uh, went back and looked. Uh, the largest economic upheavals that this country has had. And by the way, uh, Winston Churchill said, the further back you look, the further forward you will see. And I believe that's actually true, uh, true because history tends to repeat itself, especially economic cycles. Okay, so going back, um, the 10th worst economic cycle was the COVID recession, I guess we'd call it a COVID uh, economic stop in 2020 prior to that. 1987 computer doc, uh, computer crash on, on Wall Street. I remember that day in October 1987. Um, then the 2000 dot com bubble. Uh, I was actually a day trader uh, at that point in time, and uh, that was an interesting thing. Uh, World War II 1939 was seventh. 1907 panic. The Wall Street market panic was sixth, fifth place. Uh, was the actual cycle where depression, the Great Depression started in 1932. Uh, fourth was the oil panic slash taking us off the gold standard of 19, early 1970, 73 actually. Um, and it's, I don't think we've ever actually determined whether it was the chicken or the egg. Was it the oil, was it OPEC uh, sticking it to us on oil prices or was it actually the resultant taking ourselves off a of gold standard? that actually caused that cycle, but both those things happened at that time. Number three, 2008, mortgage meltdown, uh, uh, now called the Great Recession. Um, then we had the, the second place was the uh, uh, 1937, uh, it was actually a, a mini recession, but it was of significant impact. It was at the tail end of the Great Depression, and it became the recession that happened and lasted up to uh, just prior to World War II. And the, the worst was, of course, uh, Black Friday, uh, which was October of 1929. So we had the giant stock market meltdown. Stockbrokers you know, committed suicide, jumped out of buildings. Uh, the market uh, just tanked. Um, 
next week we're going to talk and, and I will make some predictions as to where I think this current cycle is going to end on that list. It's not ranked there at this point in time. But if you look at all of the news cycles and the news um, from a lot of folks that I respect, a lot of the, the big uh, articles and the big news outlets out there that are considered pretty straight line down the middle, uh, don't have a dog in the fight just or an ax to grind. They're usually pretty accurate. Market Watch came out this morning. Fed's biggest hike since 1994 means millions, millions more home buyers may be priced out of the housing market. Um, CNBC, the Fed rate, hike, rate hikes have global ramifications. Here are three ways the world could be hit. Uh, let's see. Uh, this was on Market Watch as well. The economy is going to collapse, said Wall Street veteran Novogratz. We are going to go into a really fast recession. Um, and then the one that I ascribe to, uh, it was a business by Business Insiders. It was day before yesterday. The stock market crash is looking like the three-year dot-com sell-off. I know that one pretty, pretty particularly because uh, in late 99, early 2000, I had bought a lot of biotech stocks um, and they were going up along with all of these dot-com stocks, which were, had just started and were starting to go up pretty good. And I remember when that thing uh, took, a, took a dump, I had just gotten out a couple, three weeks prior to that. I had sold off all of my dot-com stocks. I didn't have a lot of those, but all of my um, my biotech stocks, which were basically cancer driven, um, small companies that were driven by the, the desire to cure cancer. And I was in a lot of those and I did real well during that period of time I got out, but, uh, the people who stayed in and rode that thing down, it was a big hit. So I remember that this is starting to look like that in my opinion. And that took a period of time for it to really drop down, uh, to the bottom. So we could be in one of those cycles. I think we are. Uh, we're definitely, I think, going to end up in the top 10 of all worst economic times that we've had. Um, and the, the bottom line is it's a great time to be a real estate investor. Real estate is still the safest investment that there is out there. It is uh, wildly crazy safe and protected. When you buy a stock, and I've been in the stock market, uh, you know, not in the last 10 years, I've stayed out of it, but... Um, when you buy a stock, it can go to zero. A house can't, in theory, go to zero. I've never seen a house go to zero. I've never heard of a house go to zero. It's always got some value if for no other reason than you can live in it uh, or you can rent it. There'll always be somebody who wants to live in your house for a certain price. It may not be enough, but it's not gonna be zero. So there is always a valuable value, a tangible value in real estate. And in spite of the fact that we're gonna have a hard time here over the next few years, getting people into a home, getting especially first time home buyers uh, who are really very sensitive to the price increases in mortgage rates, uh, they'll have a hard time getting into a house and getting a mortgage. But in spite of that, or maybe because of that, it'll be a great time to be a transactional engineer. Well, exactly what we do, we create uh, financial opportunities using any circumstances that come our way. And that is exactly what transactional engineering is. You take any buyer that comes your way and you can turn it into a deal that you can make money from. Um, and this is just another set of circumstances. In other words, buy, regular buyer interest rates too high um, and it's going to be hard for these buyers to buy, but there's other ways to skin a cat. There are ways to get into a house besides going out and getting a traditional mortgage. Um, and that's the kind of thing that we teach. And so I would encourage everybody to, uh, you know, keep your chin up and it's a good time to be in this side of the economy. Now, the guys in this business and, and myself personally have done best in these transitional economies. When you go from a high market to a low market or when you're at the bottom of the low market and you go up to a higher price. And this is, this is when you make money. The, the calm heads will prevail um, we've talked about this for months, actually, even in the last year, we can go back and find some news you can use where we talked about this and you're going to have a period here where there's going to be more buyers that are, have a lot of equity in their house. I mean, more sellers that have a lot of equity in their house. You're going to be able to buy cheaper, easier, 
uh, with less money down and there is more buyers out there because the buyers don't disappear just because they can't buy. They're still buyers. They're buyers in waiting. Um, and you can create product, you can create financial product based on how you buy a property that will allow you to sell it very easily to these people that are price sensitive to higher interest rates. So it is a great time to be a transactional engineer. Everybody should keep their nose to the grindstone and go out there and make a ton of money. This is literally going to be the best time to be in this business. All right.